Line is hot. Let's take a look at the Adaball MRD version 2 up close. So what we have is a very small, very lightweight package with click adjustable windage and elevation, top mounted battery, and a single push button uh, for all operations of the optic. Powering it on is simply hitting the button and then cycling through the brightness settings is simply clicking the button again. It has seven brightness settings. It does not have any night vision settings. The optic ships with a low profile mount as you can see, there's nothing too particularly special about it at the moment. It is a Burris Fast Fire Doctor uh, mounting setup. So keep that in mind if you're going to mount this on a pistol or you have other, op uh, other applications. Uh, the windage elevation, you can definitely hear the clicks and you can feel them as you rotate through. It's about one, if I recall, one MOA per click here. Some of the competing optics have a setup where once you adjust the windage elevation, you have to lock them in with little lock nuts at the rear of the optic. Not so much of an issue with the Adaball. We've already touched on some of the features. Um, pertinent ones here, 8,000 hours of battery life on the lowest, 200 on the highest setting, uh, 5 hour auto shut off, and easy access battery. We didn't touch base on those. Uh, top mounted battery, so that's great. You don't have to re-zero and, and remove the optic. Battery life doesn't seem to be that long at first glance, but when you compare other models that are similar form factor, it's actually quite competitive. Let's go ahead and remove the optic from the mount and take a look uh, underneath. Take a gander at the mounting holes. Steel inserts are present on every threaded uh, component of this mount. That is a, a very big step up. I have had some of the um, cheaper Chinese-made optics in the past, and I did sometimes wonder, especially, if this mounting um, clamp was going to pull through. If it was on the thinner side, I was worried about over-tightening uh, the optic to my gun. But because the Adaball has steel inserts, that's not a concern for me. So that's a big thumbs up. I wish more competitors would um, put these helical-style inserts into their mounts. Um, it doesn't cost much, but it adds a lot of uh, reliability and makes the act of shearing threads a lot more difficult. Let's flip the optic over. Take a look. This must be where they insert the guts through this plate. Uh, there is a little nick here, but this was a demo model Adaball sent to me for review, so it's probably been through a few reviewers' hands already. Take a look at the rubberized uh, sealant that they placed around uh, the optic on the bottom. And that's most likely to protect the guts and keep it waterproof. Uh, and it is capable of uh, taking a dip when necessary. One thing you should note is how thick the hood is. Several competitors use a two-piece construction, and you may have seen Adaball's video where he wails on um, some Vortex optics and manages to crush the hood. The Adaball survives unscathed. So that's um, largely in part because the hood is thicker. And like the RMR, you want uh, an impact point that spreads the impact out over a larger area over the glass or just maintains just structural integrity. The Adaball's hood, I think, is part of the reason you can wail on this thing and not damage it compared to some competitors. So he shipped me the mallet that he used for the test. Um, if you've seen that video, I'll post a link to it in the description. They do take a look at it. I'm definitely going to hit the Adaball and uh, see mm -hmm. if it makes make sure the glass doesn't shatter. Let's give it a few whacks. No visible damage. Of course I have to shoot this thing so I don't want to Hulk smash it, but being able to hit it, knock it over, and um, see that it stays put, stays on, without any cracking of the glass, that's a bonus. So a few more shocks, and we'll take it and mount it to, and head to the range. Me and the Adaball are out on the range on a beautiful Sunday afternoon. Um, I did a quick 25 yard sight in with the Adaball. I wanted to sight in about an inch and a half low at 25 to give me something around a 50 yard zero. The Adaball was mounted on top of a Palmetto State Armory PSAK 47 chambered in 7.62 by 39. It is mounted on a GG&G AK 47 side rail mount. Zeroing was easy. I got on paper very quickly, got an inch and a half low like I planned, 
and then I move my steel up. The gong on the left is an 8 inch gong, the gong on the right a 4 inch gong. Hitting the 4 inch gong at 100 yards is perfectly acceptable for this AK and red dot combo. I would be happy to do it, so let's see if we can nail it down. I started my shooting with a jog and a turn at 25 yards or so. No issues. Everything's going smooth. I then scooted over to 75 yards, um, and uh, or 75 yards away from my target. No issues still. Red dot is nice, round, crisp. I had no issues engaging the 8 inch or the 4 inch gong. And then finally at 100 yards, still no issues. 2 MOA and hitting the uh, 4 inch gong at this distance was awesome. It did it a few times and uh, nothing wrong with that. And that is some good accuracy for a hog gun. Um, obviously maybe some magnification could improve things, but I was very happy to hit that 4 inch steel at that distance with this setup. Behind the gun you can see the field of view is excellent. It just looks very good. The dim red dot is an effect of the GoPro not playing very well with the, the Ataball. Uh, at no point does it flicker to the human eye, it just appears to be a bright uh, red dot. Kneeling at 100, 8 inch gong, over and over, very easy, very simple, very easy to do. And remember, I didn't do anything other than a 25 yard initial zero and didn't touch a thing after that. Uh, so that's pretty awesome. The setup even permitted me hits on the 4 inch swinger. Much harder to hear, it just doesn't have the same resonance as the big gong, uh, but it did get hit as well during these 100 yard sessions and I was very happy with that. Having an optic being capable of resisting water or the elements is important, so naturally we gave the Ataball and the AK a dunk. Notice that water pools in the uh, above the battery tray. This is a common complaint for this style of optic. You're going to have to shake it, you're going to have to spin it, you're going to have to whack it, whatever you need to do to clear the emitter. Um, in this case, I found the red dot right away. No issues. And we can go ahead and uh, dunk it again. Out of the water a second time, we're still good to go. However, when I shot, or I kept shooting, you'll see a lot of the water spray coming off the AK. Uh, it must have bounced up off the, um, above the battery tray or something like that. I did have some water on the emitter again, so I had to clear the optic, which involved giving it a good little whack. Okay, it's simple as that, or swipe over the emitter with your finger. It's going to be a common problem for this style of optic, so keep that in mind. If you're going to be going through the mud or the rain, you don't want an open red dot sight uh, with an emitter that can be occluded. So keep that in mind. Your right application needs the right tool. Okay. Otherwise, as a mini red dot, the thing was rocking. Walking back to the 100, decided to do some basic shock testing. You saw it survive the mallet, so I want to make sure it survives with a zero. Um, you could be dropping it from shoulder level or from a tree stand if you're hunting hogs, and you want to make sure your optic maintains its zero. So we did a couple quick shocks here, nothing catastrophic, but I definitely wanted to give it um, a nice little swing. Yeah, it did stick in the dirt, that was a little weird. Um, walking back to the 100 and let's check it out. Back at 100 yards, getting ready to go. Uh, we're going to take a shot at the steel, make sure we didn't lose our zero. First shot, the dot is gone. Cycle through my settings, what the heck's going on? Of course, Murphy's Law. What did we just talk about with the open style reflex optics? Yep, a piece of grass flew up and landed right in front of the emitter. A finger swipe, and we're back online. So wrapping up my thoughts on the optic, the optic has to do a very simple job. Project a red dot, maintain zero. It did that. It took the tumbles, it took impacts from the mallet, and it did not break, uh, and it functions fine. At a $200 price point, it is an entry-level optic, um, but at least, you know, if you're going to be if you're gonna be cheap, be strong. You know, if you're going to be an entry-level optic, um, don't let your shooters down by being crushed after you fall. That's probably a pretty good tip for anybody else bringing an optic to the market. Uh, you want something that can take the abuse, you want something that's simple, and I think the Ataball checks those, box, checks those boxes. Um, on the downside, battery life could be a bit longer. 
If you activate this sucker 40 times on high and put it away each time, letting it 5 hour auto off, you're only going to have about 40 ish activations. So you're going to need to um, cycle it down to a lower setting before putting it away. That said, that's probably my biggest gripe. It did what a red dot's supposed to do. It worked. It maintained zero. It took some tumbles. And I think Adaball's got a good product at $200 here. All right, I hope you enjoyed the review. This is New Rifleman signing out.